Hey everyone, I'm Paul Christmas. Here's your next generation update. So this Sunday, standing in front of the kids, I felt impressed upon to just, let's get back to basics. I just wanted to preach the gospel, the good news, the simplicity of what Jesus did at the cross. I was partially inspired because the, week, the couple days before, my whole family got hit with this nasty, nasty stomach bug, and I puked. I threw up for the first time in about 12 years, and I almost beat Jerry Seinfeld's record of 13 and a half, but that's besides the point. Seinfeld fans, you'll understand. But the point was, I still was weak and it was fresh on my mind. And I hate sickness. I hate it so much. And I especially hate when people excuse sickness as God's will or something God uses to teach us a lesson. That's just not who he is. He's a good father who doesn't give bad gifts to his kids. He gives good gifts to his kids. That's what Jesus says. He says, aren't you who are evil even know how to give good gifts to your children? So God doesn't give us sickness. And so I wanted to talk about what Jesus did at the cross, how our bodies are, we're not meant for sickness. Sickness was introduced through Adam and Eve's choice to sin, to let death into the world. And that just allowed a whole lot of things into the world were never God's plan, but God's redirecting us back. And so when Jesus died at the cross, he, he made it available for us to walk in perfect health. Now, I haven't met anybody who's gotten there yet. Of course, Jesus, who walked both as man and God on the earth, yes, fully human, fully God, that's a divine mystery, but it's true, walked as fully man, was never recorded once as being sick. What else do we know about Jesus? He was perfect. He never sinned. So therefore, the connotation, the connection between sin and sickness is real. And the only reason sickness can get to us is because at some point in our lives, whether it's today, whether it was a year ago, we've committed sin. And that allows, that is part of what weakens our body to be susceptible to germs and all these other things going on. But the truth is that the closer we walk with the Lord, the more we walk in his plan for us, we take care of ourselves, we treat the body as a temple, the more we do those things, the healthier we will be. So I told them the story of John G. Lake. Now John G. Lake's one of my favorite revivalists. He's from the early 1900s. And John G. Lake had an amazing healing, healing ministry. He spread it from South Africa where he went for a time back to America. He went to, up to Washington and Spokane and opened up the healing rooms. And at one point, even a nationally syndicated newspaper recognized Spokane, Washington as the healthiest city in America. He was an amazing man. And one time on television, he invited a scientist to challenge this belief that sickness can't touch us in our, in our bodily form if we're walking perfectly with the Lord. And by doing this, he had such faith. He had the scientist put a virus on his hand that actually would have infected him through the skin if, uh, if he wasn't walking in this kind of faith. They then put a microscope on it and watched as the virus touched John G. Lake's skin, it actually died. The tension here is that John G. Lake, even though very healthy and believed for faith, healed hundreds of thousands of people, even John G. Lake eventually died of a disease. Now why is that? Our bodies are weak. We won't have our perfect bodies until we're with Jesus in heaven because even someone as amazing as John G. Lake had sinned at some point, which allowed sickness into his body. Bill Johnson, one of my favorite speakers, always says, sickness is to the body what sin is to the soul. So it's a divine mystery. I don't have all the ins and outs about it. Neither do you. In fact, these are mysteries we're gonna to have to take up before the Lord. We're not meant to live a life of constant sickness. We're not meant to live a life of poverty. These were not meant for us. You know, Moses was 120 years old and said his sight hadn't failed him at all. I always joke with my wife. I say, I'm going to live to 120 because why not? I should be proclaiming that. You should be proclaiming that. We should all be proclaiming and expecting to live good long lives. Stop cursing ourselves. Believe for it because that is God's will for you. I love the gospel. I love our Jesus. I love our God who has given so much to us, who's called us sons and daughters, brought us into full adoption, given us the Holy Spirit as a sign of our inheritance. I love it. He is so good to us, so much better than we think. 
And so let's go after sickness. Let's go after poverty. Let's go after all the things on earth that were not God's will for us. It really always does come down to the simple gospel, and I never get tired of preaching it. God bless y'all, and we'll see you next week.